I'm Gus Gazard. I'm the Director of the Glaucoma Service uh, here at Moorfields and a Professor of Glaucoma Studies at the Institute of Ophthalmology at UCL. What I'd like to talk about today is the culmination, the pinnacle really, of a lot of work by a lot of people. So I think it's eight years now in the making. Um, and it's a specific piece of research that looked at a specific treatment for glaucoma. We know that it can work, but should we be using it? And that's selective laser trabeculoplasty. It's a laser treatment for lowering eyeball pressure. And the study was called the LIGHT study. It's a very gentle, focused light, focused laser treatment that's delivered through a contact lens to the normal drainage channel, the trabecular meshwork at the front of the eye. It's done on a slit lamp microscope with a laser attached as an outpatient procedure. It doesn't hurt, uh, it has very few side effects. There are small risks of anything, there are risks of eye drops, uh, but it seems to be extremely safe. We only had one patient in the study who needed any extra treatment after the laser, and that was one patient who needed uh, a tablet for a day. It was reserved for some difficult cases or by some enthusiasts, but most people didn't have access to this. And so we set ourselves the question of, we know that it lowers the pressure, so why aren't we using it? Should we be doing this instead or as well as eye drops? Unlike the older type of laser which caused localised burns in this spongy trabecular meshwork tissue, it causes very little physical harm, but it managed to encourage white blood cells to enter into that tissue and clear out some of the blockage. The mechanism of action of SRT seems to be through the induction of a very small amount of inflammation at the trabecular meshwork. Macrophage monocyte egress from the blood and they migrate from the blood into the trabecular meshwork and those white blood cells clear some of the blockage in the trabecular meshwork. The effect of the laser is that the white blood cells seem to clear some of the blockage and allow the fluid to leave the eye more readily. Immediately after SRT the vision is a little bit blurred, but just a little. The eye is often a little bit irritable, patients ex experience light sensitivity and photophobia over the next couple of days. So if I do a laser on a Thursday, I tell them they'll be wearing sunglasses over the weekend. Too much inflammation and they take some painkilling drops. They have some anti-inflammatories to take home. But the recovery is very quick. So our objectives were in a pragmatic study that very much mirrored what we do in clinical practice to look at a comparison between starting off with laser and starting off with eye drops. What was the outcome of the actual pressure control? Well, they had slightly more visits at target in the laser group. What was interesting was that in terms of progression, which means in glaucoma means deterioration, the medication arm, the eye drops group, had more people deteriorating than we did in the laser group. They also needed more cataract extractions. They needed more surgery for their pressure control. And in the laser group, we had no one that required that in the first three years. And in the laser group, fewer people needed an increase in the intensity of their treatments. I think the implication for all of us is that we're going to be using fewer medications, fewer drops. Hopefully that means there'll be fewer side effects, fewer patients who are having uh, problems with ocular surface disease. And I think that's going to have a big impact out in the community when those patients see their optometrists, a big impact on how often they uh, need to take additional treatments for their ocular surface. I think probably the biggest advantage is that it gave better disease control. And the reason for that was Although we thought that the pressures were similar in the two groups, because if they were too high, we treated them more, we probably had patients not taking the medications as often or as much, or as well as they perhaps should have done, even in the context of a clinical trial. So I think the biggest impact of laser on treatment of glaucoma is that when we've done the laser, we know that it's done. And if it hasn't worked, the pressure goes up. And we can detect that very easily. Whereas with drops, we're much more reliant on patients remembering, being able to take the medication, not being put off by the side effects of the medication. We're reliant on patients doing that day in, day out, for the six or 12 months that they're not being seen by a doctor. So compliance, concordance, all those uh, aspects of uh, medication usage uh, outside of the clinic are overcome by using the laser. From the perspective of the NHS, one of the exciting things about the study, and which led to us being funded to run the trial in the first place, was that there was the possibility that this might be cost effective. Taking the real costs of every visit, every treatment, every contact, and it costs less for the NHS overall. And so the proposal is, on the basis of this, that the primary SLT, by which we mean SLT is the first treatment for your very first diagnosed, uh, when you're very first diagnosed with either high pressure or glaucoma, should be considered for all patients 
with those appropriate diseases, open angle glaucoma and ocular hypertension. We've got three optometrists, I think, in the trust at the moment delivering SLT. Uh, we're just expanding that now. We've just put out a call for uh, expressions of interest from other optometrists who are already doing glaucoma, working in glaucoma clinics. Uh, it's a relatively straightforward uh, procedure to do. It's also very safe. Uh, and if we are going to be doing it for not just every new patient, but patient, many patients who are already taking drops, there's going to be a huge demand. Everyone at the moment, I think, is being offered laser if their clinician, if their consultant chooses to do so. What I hear is that there is now a huge, there is now much increased demand for the laser within more fields generally. It's an interesting question whether or not this is something that might end up available on the high street to individuals with glaucoma. Personally, I think that's unlikely because of the clinical care uh, and long-term monitoring that a patient with glaucoma requires um, after the laser, as well as the risks of the laser itself. We can now see that it has changed and is changing and will continue to change. I think what my colleagues are doing, not just here in the UK, but uh, around the world from what I'm told. It's been very rewarding to be able to transform the care and to find a question and then answer the question, should we be doing this treatment? The reason I put my energies into this was that I thought it would make a difference to the patient experience and, and what we actually do. So that's, that's been great. It's been a, a sort of culmination of many years of hard work. Uh, and um, it's been very rewarding that actually it's led to a change in how we practice medicine.